Hello chaps and chapezzes, and this week we're going to talk about my top 10 bonefish flies. So it's that time of year, saltwater trips are on the horizon and I was pulling out all of my fly boxes to have a look and see what's in there, stock check, see what I need to uh, stock back up on, which fly patterns worked last year and which ones didn't. So while I was doing that, it suddenly occurred to me that um, I seem to have fewer and fewer patterns and more and more of them. And the reason for that is I really narrowed it down to a much smaller selection of flies that I have confidence in using. And when you're bone fishing or when you're doing any kind of uh, fishing for that matter, I think a lot of the time people fish with flies that they have confidence in and quite often they're successful. So I thought I would run through a list of my top 10 bonefish flies. So coming in at number 10, the mantis shrimp. This is a really staple pattern, great fly to have in your box. Comes in a variety of different colors. I'm very keen on tans, olives, and a kind of shade of pink. They are very, very good in sandy, slightly marly bottoms especially. So when you're fishing somewhere like Cuba, the sand flats of Christmas Island, particularly good for mantis shrimp. A lot of the fish species are tuned into the mantis shrimp there and very good in the Indian Ocean as well. So that's my starting off pattern. Next for me would be the turnip micro shrimp. I think that a lot of us fish with flies which are too big. So when you are fishing somewhere like the pancake flats of Los Roques or turnip atoll, for example, you're fishing hard coral flats with turtle grass over the top. So heavy weighted flies go straight in and get stuck in the turtle grass. And you'll find those fish nudging along through the turtle grass. So it's really useful to have a very, very lightweight shrimp, something which doesn't have a dumbbell eye, maybe just a plastic barbell eye. And this micro shrimp fits that bill perfectly. It's tied on a size 10 and a size eight, and you want it nice and small. It's a bit like dry fly fishing for bonefish. Next on my list is a very staple pattern in the Indian Ocean, the fleeing crab. And this is really a kind of smaller version of a merkin crab, but rather than the legs coming out the sides, then the legs come out at the end of the hook shank. These flies give a great feeling of movement or a little crab puffing along as it escapes from an oncoming hoover. And they are a great fly to use in the Indian Ocean and I think they would probably work all around the world, but that's another of my great favorites. Next on my list is the Itchy Trigger. Now this was a fly which was devised in Australia, particularly for trigger fish. It's tied by Fulling Mill, and it's tied actually on a very heavy wire hook. It's designed for those crunching teeth of a trigger fish, but it makes a brilliant bonefish pattern for big bones. If you're hunting big bones on, in skinny water, this fly will have them coming from serious distance. I took some down to the Seychelles to try last year and I ended up using that almost entirely. So I had one fly which I could use for triggerfish and bonefish. Real favorite of mine at the moment. Next is the Christmas Island Special. I don't think anybody's box is equipped without some Christmas Island specials in it. It's one of the oldest staple patterns in our armory, a bit like the old brown Crazy Charlie. Originally devised by Moana Koff on Christmas Island, it's a phenomenally useful pattern. So it's a heavier pattern with a heavier dumbbell eye. So it will allow you to get a relatively small fly down in a water column quite quickly. Comes in a number of colors. My favorite is a kind of burnt chili color. It's brilliant to show up in more marly kind of greeny bottom. It shows up like a sore thumb and I've had great success with that fly. You don't want them too big though. They do come in some bigger sizes, but I prefer them quite small. Then there's the sand prawn. Now the sand prawn was a fly developed by James Christmas on Alphonse uh, a number of years ago. It was one of the first flies that utilized a keel system on its back. So what that means is there are two monofilament spines that run over the back of the fly which have got hot orange lead beads running freely up and down those. So what that does is as soon as the fly lands in the water, it flips it over. So the weights sink down 
and then the hook shank stays up, which means that you don't get stuck in the bottom. But being that kind of prawny, whitey, creamy color is phenomenal on sand bottoms. And this is also another fly which crosses over and can be used for trigger fish and permit as well. But uh, it's staply a bonefish pattern and it's one of my great favorites. My next fly is the squimp. The squimp is an older fly, originally developed from the turd fly, and it was incredibly successful and still is in Cuba. Uh, although it's used all around the world as well, it's a brown tannish fly with a marabou tail which moves in the water column with great fluidity. It has a heavier dumbbell tied in through the middle section and then some rubber legs tied in at the eye of the hook. And this on marl bottoms is absolutely phenomenal. And I would also recommend you have this in a number of different sizes. Then there's the Cuban shrimp, uh, another fly tied by Fulling Mill. And this is actually a long shank fly, but it's actually very light. Um, I really like it because it's a combination of a kind of mantis shrimp with the rubber legs that come out the sides. And it moves very, very nicely, but it's not too heavy. So it actually offers quite a big mouthful in, in skinny water or if you want to fish it on turtle grass. So I've used that not only in Cuba, but it's also done well, well in the Indian Ocean, Belize, Mexico and Christmas Island. So it's a really ubiquitous pattern. The runner up to the top of my list is the Amber Bonefish Bitters. Originally developed by Craig Matthews on Turniff Atoll in Belize. It is a very simple pattern and it utilizes a bit of epoxy around the dumbbell eye uh, and then essentially rubber legs and a bit of deer hair. Now the deer hair works as a weed guard and this fly should be small. It should be eights, tens, maybe sixes at the most, but eights and tens are my favorite. It's brilliant to fish in turtle grass because it kind of sits on the grass so when the fish are moving up through the grass and they're tailing and they're looking for crustaceans fleeing in front of them, they'll see this fly sat on the grass there. And uh, I've had huge success with that fly uh, right the way through the Caribbean, but especially Belize and Mexico. And at the top of the list, the gotcha. You can't go anywhere without a gotcha in your bonefish box, but I like it with a little bit of a twist because I like rubber in it. So I like rubber legs, so I like the silly legged gotcha. Uh, it's a pearl shrimp imitation. It's a development of the original Crazy Charlie, but you wouldn't go anywhere in the world without some of these in your box. They're a really great pattern. And what I would recommend with all of these flies is that you carry them in a number of different weights and sizes. Over the years, I have found that my numbers of fly patterns. I used to go into a shop and go, ooh, that's nice, I need one of those, and I need some of those, and I need, ooh, that looks different, I'll take some of them. And I ended up with boxes full of lots and lots of different flies. And what I've really moved towards is there's about 10 or 12 patterns that I absolutely love, and I buy them by the dozen. So that I have them all lined up in my fly box, and I carry them in different weights and different sizes. That allows me to adapt to whatever water depth I'm fishing, whether it's stronger current or less current or very, very skinny water. So if you've got some which have gone as far as lead dumbbells, which will get down through two or three feet of water, say you're fishing for big bone fish in Grand Bahama, and then you want some really little ones, which may not even have eyes at all, which you'll be able to fish on the turtle grass flats of Turniff or Las Rocas. So have them in a variety of different sizes and weights. Well, as always, I hope you found that video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.